Hi, it's Carlos here from CAD Group Australia. So today we're going to have a look at iParts and how these work with copy design in Volt. So I've got here an iPart factory. So if you have a look at that, I've got four different combinations or iterations of that iPart with different sizes of hole or different numbers of holes, different positions of holes. And I have these iPart and I've just placed that into a target assembly. And what you'll notice in this target assembly is that it actually contains all four iterations of that single iPart. So this is basically the iPart members now that have been placed into this target assembly. So this has all been checked into Vault. Let's have a look at what it looks inside Vault. So I basically have this target 01. Okay. And what you'll notice is that if I go on to, say, for example, the Uses tab, I've got target 01, it uses each iteration, the I part member here, and then it still refers to that exact same I part factory. So we kind of see the parent-child relationship of these. So obviously you've got the top level here, and then the parent of this member is this factory, same with the other members. So what actually happens when we do a copy design? So let's try that out now. Right click on the target assembly, you do copy design. So with copy design, what you'll notice is that, uh, okay, sorry, let's let's configure this as we would. So let's create a target destination first. Let's call this high part target as C02. Okay, so put that over. All right. So let's have a look at the default behavior out of the box when you do a copy design. So what you'll notice is that as expected, the target assembly will be copied, okay? And then what you'll notice is that all the member parts and the factory parts are also, are actually set to reuse. So why is that? And that's a default behavior. Let's have a look at what happens if we do this. I click OK. So the copy design is now going to run. And if we have a look at target assembly 02, target 01. Okay, let's open that now. No, no need to check it out. Just use this project file. No. Okay, so what you'll notice is that with this target, Again, as expected, the member parts have, co have gone through, copied, but they are still I parts. Meaning, at any given time, I can still right click and do a change component here and maybe change that to this instance here. Okay? So they've actually become, or they are still I parts. Now, what, that's, again, that's a default behavior. So now what happens if I actually choose to instead of reusing those I parts, what happens if I choose to actually copy that? So let's do that copy design again. Okay, I've got copy design here. So I'm just going to again nominate another folder. Let's call this I part target SC03. Now for target SC03, Okay, I forgot to rename this earlier, but let's make rename it now target 03 to prevent confusion. Okay, if you look at the member parts, I can actually click on that and set that to copy. But I cannot change the setting of the factory part. And that is because Vault treats the factory part much like a library component where you actually would not want to copy a library component because it's actually referring to that library component. But let's see what actually happens now. So we go note again, all the members have been copied. I click OK. Okay, so we got target 03. And just looking at the folder structure that's been generated by the uh, by the copy design command you will notice or have a clue of what actually happens. If I look at now fixed, you'll notice that it's actually generated member files 
which are not linked to the factory component. So let's have a look at what that looks like inside the inventor environment. Check it out. Update the assembly. No. All right, so it looks exactly the same. The main difference, as you'll see, is that now each of those member components are actually just individual part files. They're no longer considered iParts, and I lose the capability of just changing the configuration of this particular iPart. So in fact, if I open that up, what you'll notice is that it's actually a derived component with a link that's already been broken. So the link has been broken. We can't update that anymore. So I hope that gives you a better idea of what the difference of copy design for iParts are. The exact same behavior occurs with iAssemblies in that, you, again, you cannot copy an iAssembly factory, but you can definitely copy an iAssembly member. While we're on the topic of iParts, let's also have a look at what happens when you actually modify an iPart factory and when that iPart factory is controlled inside Bolt. So I'm just going to open this up again and let's have a look at that. Okay, if you remember, this is my iPart factory, four different instances. So if I now go on to the Manage tab, just want to make sure that I'm editing the factory scope. So let's say for this case, I just want to delete this fillet here. Okay, so I've deleted that fillet, or maybe let's delete the chamfer as well, so that it's more, the change is more prominent and more obvious. All right, uh, I should have actually checked this out as well. Okay, all good. And now, if we actually regenerate all of these, and generate the files of each one of them. Okay. So we're just checking that the change has been applied to all instances. We're happy with that. Save that. Check it in. Okay. So notice it's checked in the actual factory and the modified members as well. Click OK. All right. Now let's have a look at what happens inside Vault. So if you remember that I part here that we've actually chosen, fixed one, that's actually gotten its chamfers removed. Let's see what happens to an assembly which has actually been, or an assembly where that I part has actually been placed. So if I take a look at, say, the target assembly that we've got, remember, target 01, okay? I'm going to now generate the preview of this. And as you'll see, it still has that chamfer, it still has those fillets, but as you'll see, Vault will tell you new data is available. So if I click here to update that, it's going to give us that status there. And what you'll notice immediately is that even without opening up the assembly, the actual assembly, Vault has already updated that target assembly with the updated members of the iPart that we've just changed. And because I've done that within the Vault environment, I, I had that open earlier as well inside my inventor environment, it had actually downloaded those files and as you'll see, it's been updated here as well. Target 01, if you remember, Right? Because it's still I parts, but because target 03, if you remember, target 03 was actually the one where we did do a copy on the members, as you'll see, the fillets and chamfers are still there. So would you want to copy members or reuse members? I think it's more of a case, a use case. So if you want to ensure that your target copy design assembly is basically a standalone, like an island that never gets updated if, let's say, the iPart changes, then by all means do a copy on all the iPart members. But if, for example, you do want your target assembly to still reflect 
the latest status of the iPart factory, then just leave it to be as a copy in copy design. So I hope that uh, helps clear some things. Um, that's all for now. Bye.